section 26 with this short set what words from me o sanjaya hast thou heard indicative of war that thou apprehendest war o sire peace is preferable to war who o charioteer having got the other alternative would wish to fight it is known to me o sanjaya that if a man can have every wish of his heart without having to do anything he would hardly like to do anything even though it might be of the least troublesome kind far less would be engaged in war why should a man ever go to war who is so cursed by the gods that he would select war the sons of prita no doubt desire their own happiness but their conduct is ever marked by righteousness and conducive to the good of the world a desire only that happiness which results from righteousness he that fondly followeth the lead of his senses and is desirous of obtaining happiness and avoiding misery betake himself to action which in its essence is nothing but misery he that hankers after pleasure causeth his body to suffer one free from such hankering knoweth not what misery he is as hand and kindled fire if more fuel be put on to upon it blaze it forth again with augmented force so desire is never satiated with the acquisition of its object but gain its force like unkindled fire when clari- when clarified butter is poured upon it compare all this abundant fund of enjoyment which king dhritarashtra hath with what we possess he that is unfortunate never winneth victories he that is unfortunate enjoyeth not the voice of music he that is unfortunate doth not enjoy garlands and scents nor can one that is unfortunate enjoy cool and fragrant yogans and finally he that is unfortunate weareth not fine clothes if this were not so we would never have been driven from the kurus although however all this is true yet none cherish torments of the heart the king being himself in trouble seeketh protection in the might of others this is not wise let him however receive from others the same behavior that he displays towards them the man who casteth a burning fire at midday in the season of spring in a forest of dense underwood at suddenly when that fire blazeth forth by aid of the wind to grieve for his lot if he wishes to escape o sanjaya why doth king dhritarashtra now be vale although hath all this prosperity it is because he had followed at first the counsels of his wicked son of vicious soul addicted to crooked ways and confirmed in folly duryodhana disregarded the words of vidura the best of his well-wishers as if the latter were hostile to him king dhritarashtra desirous solely of satisfying his sons would knowingly enter upon an unrighteous course indeed on account of his fondness for his son he would not pay heed to vidura who out of all the kurus is the wisest and best of all his well-wishers possessing vast learning clever in speech and righteous in act king dhritarashtra is desirous of satisfying his son who while himself seeking honors from others is envious and wrathful who transgresses the rules for the acquisition of virtue and wealth whose tongue is foul who always follows the dictates of his wrath whose soul is absorbed in sensual pleasures and who full of unfriendly feelings to many obeys no law and whose life is evil art implacable and understanding vicious for such a son has this king dhritarashtra knowingly abandoned virtue and pleasure even then o sanjaya when i was engaged in that game of dice i thought that the destruction of the kurus was at hand for when speaking those wise and excellent words vidura obtained no prize from dhritarashtra then ho charioteer did trouble overtake the kurus when they disregarded the words of vidura so long as they had placed themselves under the lead of his wisdom their kingdom was in a flourishing state hear from me o charioteer who are the counselors now for the covetous duryodhana they are dusasana and shakuni the son of suvala and karna the suta's son o son of gavalgana look at this folly of his 
so i do not see though i think about it how there can be prosperity for the kurus and the sringayas when dhritarashtra hath taken the throne from others and the far seeing vidura hath been banished elsewhere dhritarashtra with his sons is now looking for an extensive and undisputed sovereignty over the whole world absolute peace is therefore unattainable he regardeth what he hath already got to be his own and arjuna taketh up his weapon in fight karna believeth him capable of being withstood formerly there took place many great battles why could not karna then be of any avail to them it is known to karna and drona and the grand sire bishma as also to many other kurus that there is no wielder of the bow comparable to arjuna it is known to all the assembled rulers of the earth how the sovereignty was obtained by duryodhana although that repressor of force arjuna was alive pertinaciously doth shri dhritarashtra's son believe that it is possible to rob the sons of pandu of what is their own although he knoweth having himself gone to the place of fight how arjuna comforted himself when he had nothing but a bow four cubits along for his weapon of battle dhritarashtra's son are alive simply because they have not yet heard the twang of the stretch gandiva Duryodhana believeth his object already gained as long as he beholdeth not the worthful Bhima O sire even Indra would forbear to rob us of our sovereignty as long as Bhima and Arjuna and the heroic Nakula and the patient Sahadeva are alive O charioter the whole king with his son still entertains the notion that his sons will not be perished O Sanjaya on the field of battle consumed by the fiery wrath of pandu's son thou knowest o sanjaya what misery we have suffered for my respect to thee i would forgive them all thou knowest what transpired between ourselves and those sons of kuru thou knowest how we comforted ourselves towards dhritarashtra's son at the same state of things still continue i shall seek peace as thou counselest me to do let me have indraprastha for my kingdom Let this be given to me by Duryodhana, the chief of the Bharata's race. Thus ended section 26 in the Nyodhyoga Parva, Hasta Udhyoga Parva.